A lot of people are asking about intermittent fasting. And the question is, is it just another fad diet? In fact, science tells us that its benefits go far beyond weight loss. I'm starting to see it as a transformative lifestyle change, much more so than just a diet strategy. So let's get into it. What exactly is intermittent fasting? So basically at its core, it just means going through sustained periods of time with little or no calorie consumption. The three most widely studied regimens are alternate day fasting, where you fast or at least restrict your calories every other day. So you have these alternating feast days and fast days. There's a 5-2 intermittent fasting, where you eat normally for five days a week, and then you fast or restrict your calories for two days, ideally two consecutive days. And then there's daily time-restricted feeding, where you eat all of your calories in a six to eight hour time window each day, and then you fast for the other 16 to 18 hours a day. And what seems to work best is what's called early time-restricted eating, where you basically eat all your calories in the early part of the day, and you fast for the rest of the day, which works better than the other way around. And this culture of eating three times a day and then snacking throughout the day is kind of ingrained in us. So fasting just doesn't seem natural, yet many Eastern philosophies include fasting as part of their routine and have done so for centuries. And I would argue that fasting is in fact more natural than what we typically do today. And the reason for that is that our bodies were designed for fasting by evolution. And guess who fasted? Our ancestors going all the way back to cavemen. And they lived a life of feast or famine. If they killed something, they ate for days. And when it ran out, they then fasted for days until their next kill. So over hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, they evolved mechanisms to be able to maintain their mental and physical function, including things like hunting prey over large distances, all on an empty stomach. So what exactly happens to the body when it's fasting? The two main sources of energy for the cells in our body are glucose and fatty acids. If you've eaten, assuming that you've had carbs, that glucose is used for energy. And any fat that you've eaten then gets stored as triglycerides, which is basically fat tissue. Now what happens during fasting is that you don't have glucose coming in, so your body starts to break down those triglycerides back into fatty acids, which the liver then takes and converts into what are called ketone bodies and those ketone bodies then become your major source of energy. And that's called a metabolic switch. Basically switching from glucose as your main fuel to ketones as your main fuel, which means that you're breaking down your fat. And when that happens, a whole bunch of evolutionary pathways from those ancient prehistoric humans start to kick in. Those are called adaptive responses to fasting, and they include better glucose regulation, increased resistance to stress, less inflammation, less production of oxygen-free radicals, which can damage our cells, and better DNA repair. These are all good things. And the best part is that these responses actually carry over into the fed state. So what you end up with is a whole bunch of sustained health benefits. But will it help you to lose weight? The answer is very likely yes. Even if you don't intentionally change your diet, but you restrict the time over which you consume your calories, studies suggest that you will lose weight with intermittent fasting. Now, if you do change your diet and you're actively restricting your calories, whether you also restrict the time period for consuming those calories, in other words, whether you fast or not, probably doesn't make a huge difference. If you restrict your calories, you will lose weight, and adding intermittent fasting to the mix probably provides a modest benefit at most. But there are other benefits of fasting that go beyond weight loss. Studies comparing intermittent fasting regimens with other weight loss strategies show that for the same amount of weight loss, those who fasted had a better reduction in waist circumference, which is correlated with cardiovascular disease, and less insulin resistance, which is a precursor of diabetes. And aside from weight loss and metabolic effects, we now have hundreds of studies looking at the broader health effects of intermittent fasting. For example, studies show that alternate day fasting can reverse insulin resistance in patients with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes and reduces sugar levels, insulin levels, and cholesterol. And that ties into cardiovascular health. Many studies now show that intermittent fasting improves blood pressure, resting heart rate, cholesterol and triglycerides, and all of this happens in non-diabetics. It also reduces markers of inflammation and what's called oxidative stress, both of which are associated with atherosclerosis, or formation of those plaques that block our arteries. And those improvements can be seen within two to four weeks of starting intermittent fasting, 
though they do go away if you resume a normal eating schedule. We've also known for over 100 years now that fasting reduces cancer in animals. Studies have shown less tumors, less growth in tumors, and better responses to chemo and radiation. But the most impressive effect might just be on aging. So multiple studies have shown that rats and mice who fast live anywhere from 14 to 45% longer. But what if you're lifting weights and trying to bulk up? You obviously need protein and you need your calories, so intermittent fasting seems like a bad idea. But in fact, the effect of intermittent fasting on physical activity is an area of debate. The body does tend to conserve energy when you're fasting by reducing the number of calories it uses during exercise. And at the same time, some studies suggest that people who fast might naturally reduce their activity levels, and that might mean loss of muscle mass. On the other hand, we have studies that show that if you're on an active weight training regimen, fasting 16 hours a day will allow you to lose fat while maintaining your muscle mass. But the question is, how do you actually do this in real life, especially when everyone around you is eating three meals a day? And frankly, when we don't eat, a lot of us get hangry. The reason for that is that when you're hungry, you crave sugar, and if you don't get that sugar, your stress hormones increase, which makes you irritated, reduces your concentration level, and that makes you prone to anger. But the good news is that studies also show that those effects basically disappear within about a month of doing this. So it can be tough, but if you ride it out, it goes away. So here's how you do it. For example, if you want a 5-2 regimen, you want to get to no more than 500 calories on two days each week. So you might start with one day a week of just 1,000 calories for a month, and then you go to two days a week of 1,000 calories for the next month, then you go down to 750 calories on those two days in the third month. And finally, you go all the way down to 500 calories in the fourth month, and then you stay there. On the other hand, if you want to do time-restricted feeding, you're trying to get into a routine where you're not eating for 16 to 18 hours straight on each day. So in the first month, you might limit your eating to 10 hours for five days of the week and then have your two cheat days. In the second month, you might restrict eating to over eight hours. So let's say you have a good breakfast at 7 a.m. and then you have a late lunch before 3 p.m. and you skip dinner. In the third month, you go to eating in only a six hour window on those five days a week, so basically 18 hours of fasting. And in the fourth month, you hit your goal, which is limiting yourself to that six hour window, but you do it every single day. And remember, there's flexibility here. The closer you get to that 18 hours a day of fasting, the more you benefit, because that switch to ketones starts happening as soon as eight to 12 hours after the onset of fasting. Intermittent fasting has been around for a long time. In fact, it's been around for hundreds of thousands of years, which is why our bodies are actually designed for it. And studies show health benefits across obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, neurologic function, and possibly cancer. And the kicker is that it might actually slow down the aging process. Now we do need larger and longer studies in humans for all of these effects, but if you're looking for a lot of impact with just a simple change, look at intermittent fasting. For more health and science info, subscribe to the feed.